So my name is Viola. Um, I'm Polish, but I've been living in Australia for 20 years. I am uh, 51 uh, in a April this year, and I have two kids. I like uh, sport, uh, like not uh, like more for pleasure. Like I used to run a lot. I love swimming. I just enjoy being outside. I love nature. I'm not homebody person, you know. Cancer. It was a big surprise for all of us uh, because we didn't have anyone with cancer in our family. There was not, you know, my grandfather died from lung cancer, but it was many, many years ago and he smoked a lot. That's why, you know, when I, before I got diagnosed with cancer, I was thinking, if one day I will die, probably from a different disease, but not from cancer, because there is no cancer short story in my family. But before I got diagnosed, uh, like five years before I got diagnosed, I didn't feel like, you know, I knew something was wrong with me because I was very tired. I could sort of feel pain here. But uh, when I went to the doctor and they checked the blood, uh, blood uh, they checked the, they did the CT scan, they did everything, and there was nothing. And because I was so active, and um, they didn't find anything. You know, there was no sign of something is going on. And all of a sudden, um, when the pandemic started, it's exactly 2020 in February, when, you know, everything, the COVID and all this, this is just the beginning. This is the time when all of, like, I remember, I remember I was at home and my son said, I don't feel well. And I said, that's okay, stay at home. And then I went to work. And suddenly I could feel like a sharp pain. And since then, you know, I started to feel very weak and weaker and weaker. But I thought, but I thought it was just influenza because my son got sick, my husband, my daughter, but they were fine after three or two weeks. But I was still very, very weak. And I went to the doctor once second time, third time, and he said, that's okay, it's nothing, we, he did the blood, uh, it was because everything started in February 2020. Uh, I went to the doctor and he did all the blood, he did CT scan, he did CT scan, and nothing, nothing was showing. It was, I was, in April 2020, I was a healthy girl. And on the 1st of June, the same year, I have been diagnosed with stomach cancer stage 4. So this is how sneaky the cancer is. This stomach cancer, stomach cancer is, just takes you by surprise. Because I didn't even have a pain in my stomach. Like, you know, I was always laughing at my husband. Like he said, oh, I can't eat this because my stomach hurts. And I said, I can eat anything. And the people who suffered before didn't get sick, and me, who never complained, all of the sudden I got sick, seriously sick. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, I knew something is going on because I just didn't have a strength, honestly. I was just lying on the bed and was just, just didn't have the energy. Just didn't have the energy. And you know, honestly, I didn't have a lot of pain, and I'm not talking, I didn't have any symptoms like a blood in a stool, something like that. It was from nothing to a big thing. So I make an appointment with the doctor. Um, he gave me a referral for a, a different doctor, but I look um, at the place where all the doctors said, and I said, okay, if I have to pay for the visit, let's see the best doctor. I make the appointment and I told him what's going on. At the time, he noticed, they noticed that I lost weight. But I didn't notice that I lost weight because I was running, you know. I was a runner and I was, my all my life, I was pretty 
skinny. I didn't notice that I all of a sudden I lost five kilos. You know, because I was running with the weights, you know, just to keep my body strong. Yeah. So uh, when I saw the doctor, uh, he said, okay, let's do the endoscopy. So I saw him on Friday. We did it on Monday. It was nothing. You know, the result under the endoscopy, he, they couldn't find anything. They couldn't find anything. Um, but because the, this doctor was very good, he said, he said to me, look, we didn't find anything like they put did the, the biopsy, of course. Yeah. When they put, you know, um, but, but this doctor said, look, do another one in two days because I don't like it. It doesn't look good. Although the results, you know, are negative. I don't like it. So we did repeat after a week, uh, after three days. And then he called me in two days after the weekend and he said, yeah, it's cancer. So, yeah, it a, was a big, big, big shock to me. Um, yeah, I didn't know what to think. Of course, I, was, I thought I would die um, because the cancer, you know, just, you know, the word cancer picks you out and so that's why my friends were laughing at me and they said you really have cancer because your blood results it didn't show anything the CT scans in from apron didn't show anything the first biopsy that didn't show anything and you know they were is it really cancer but it was it was just hidden it was just in a wall of the stomach that's why I never ever had a pain, because if you have a stomach cancer and if you have a lump, you know whatever you eat, it hurts. Mine was in the stomach, so that's why I didn't have any pain. So I went to the surgeon, and um, he said it's stage four. So as you know, with the stage four, they don't really want to do anything. Uh, especially stomach cancer is uh, aggressive cancer. And uh, the other thing was the cancer didn't spread to other organs, but uh, the cancer spread outside, a little bit outside, you know. the uh, it, I think it's called peritoneal, yes. So what the surgeon said, okay, Let's put you, because you're young, I was 47 at the time. Uh, he said, okay, let's uh, do the chemo. Uh, like a, we put you on flood. Flood, so this is flood. This is the chemo for people. The doctors put pe people on flood if they have a hope that they can undergo, undergo the surgery. Otherwise, I will be put uh, on a palliative care, you know, the, the chemo that will be going for until you die. So this is one good thing, you know, they put me on flop. So it was very aggressive chemo. But um, he, he, he wrote a report and on the report was, it depends, if the chemo works, we can consider operation. When I saw the word consider, I freaked out. I could feel that my life it is in someone else's hand. And I'm not this kind of person that, you know, someone else decides about my life. So I freaked out and I started searching, you know, because this, is, this doctor said, okay, what we can do we can, if you qualify for the operation, we can remove the stomach. But I said, okay, the stomach. But what about the rest of the cancer, which is outside the stomach? And he said, this is what I can do. And I was thinking, this is not enough. This is not enough. You can't just remove the stomach and leave the rest of the cancer in my body. So um, we started searching, you know, and my mom, uh, she lives in Poland, she came across um, a method, it's called HIPEC, 
it's a high pack um, they don't recommend for they can't see good results for stomach cancer patients it's more recommended for people with colon cancer, with uh, ovarian cancer. Um, this is how the study, you know, they works. But I, I, I knew, um, I knew a doctor in Poland who will perform type and an operation on stomach cancer patient. But I was not in Poland. I was in, in Australia. So I started searching on the internet. And I found a girl who had high pain. And then I found another doctor who was uh, the best in Australia. So they put me on the chemo. It was four rounds of chemo. It was tough. It was very tough because when a woman gets sick in a family, and woman is responsible for everything, for cooking, doing all the stuff. And all of a sudden, my husband had to take over everything. And being on chemo and not having appetite, you know, was um, plus, you know, thinking about um, that it was traumatizing. So, uh, yeah, so when I was at the hospital, I was happy, you know, I was happy because, you know, I wanted to undergo under the operation. Um, so um, it was a long operation. It was 10 hours operation um, because uh, they uh, remove my stomach. They remove uh, ovaries. Uh, they remove a gallbladder. Uh, they removed part of the small intestine and big intestines. So uh, honestly, I don't know if the cancer spread to my gallbladder or I don't know. But they just removed this just in case, you know, just because they told my husband that apparently sitting uh, stomach was sitting lying on my uh, intestine, and you know. If the if the stomach was full of cancer, then could spread to intestine. That's why I, they removed as much as they could, you know. But um, look, and after removing all the stuff, uh, they performed a high pack. What is high pack? High pack. This is like a hot chemo under temperature forty two degrees. So they put. So apparently. I have never looked on YouTube because I didn't want to, but apparently they take all the organ out of you, they put the hot hot, hot chemo, they close you, and this is like in a washing machine. Like, you know, the uh, it's, it's just killing the cancer cells, what it's left. Uh, it should take about one hour and a half, but I started bleeding after an hour and they had to disconnect me. So um, that's why it took so long. It took uh, 10 hours. And then I went to the intensive care. They expected to me to be there for four days, five, you know, because this is HIPEC is very aggressive treatment. And only strong young people can... Um, be qualified for it um, but you know I always was had a lot of energy and you know like when I had the operation and then when I woke the next morning I was happy the, uh, the first question was did they operate on me this is what I wanted to know because I know a lot of story that then open you up and then they said okay sorry it's too late we can't do anything and they said yes. So I was happy already. And you know, because this is like, you know, you go on holiday and then you come come back home. You still have this energy from the holiday. And then with the time you just, this is like a balloon. And this is what happened to me. I had the operation. I woke up the next day in an intensive care. It was in the middle of the night and I was chatting. 
chatting and chatting and you know the whole world was quiet and I was talking because I was still on this you know energy the healthy energy so um, when the doctor saw me he said oh I'm pretty happy with the result it was good so they said okay it looks like you look okay so maybe we can uh, move you to a normal world straight away and I said no way you know I just you know on the you know, there was operation 10 hours. I want to stay in intensive care because I don't know, I didn't know if the people in the normal world will, will know what to do with me, you know. At the beginning, they say, you stay four days and they wanted to discharge me under 24 hours because I looked pretty okay. So they kept me for two hours and then, um, and then I stay another three weeks in a hospital it was hard. I have to tell you, it was hard because everything stopped in my inside, my, inside my body. You know, the intestine were not working. You know, it was a big shock for your body. You know, they removed half of the organs. Look, I was in pain. I was in pain, but not all the time. And um, because I. In Australia, the health system is pretty good. They have a pain team. So, you know, they are pretty on top of everything. The only thing that I remember is after the operation, after the high pack, you know, I had the stomach like, I, I was laughing like, I, like being in a, in a, being pregnant, you know, because they want me to release all the stuff by myself. They wanted to, me to go to the toilet by myself. They, they didn't want to inter, you know, do anything, you know, that it was not right with my body. So, um, yeah. So this is what happened. And that, after three days, I got discharged. I went back home. Uh, I was healing. Um, yeah, but I wanted to go back on chemo on the second round of chemo pretty straight away although they said you need at least like two months to recover because it was a big big shock for my body not only the operation but I think high pack was you know the tough I tried to be active you know uh, as I could and um, you know look I'm alive because I was doing stuff that people don't do it, you know. I was honestly, I forced myself to walk. I even jumped on the trampoline, you know, you know, just to keep my body moving. I think um, the secret of my success is that I was doing the stuff that people don't want to do. Even at the hospital, I was pushing myself, I tried to walk, uh, I tried to do different things, you know, and I was meditating, I was praying, I was just... Um, I was not accepting, you know, that I can die. So uh, at this moment, I stopped chemo uh, in uh, December 2021, and it was uh, I was it, you know I had to stop chemo because I was losing weight. My body didn't absorb nutrients at all. So my oncologist said, if we don't stop chemo you can, something can happen to you, you know, the organs start switching off, you know, uh, and it was a tough decision, you know, it was, I was scared, because chemo was something that I thought will be helping me, it's saving me, it's keeping cancer away from me, um, but then I went to another oncologist, and check what uh, what I should do and he said yeah you're right Viola yes yeah, stop the chemo get stronger you know and if something comes back 
probably not, you will be much stronger to fight. So this is what I did. I listened to another oncologist because I trust him. And, um, and uh, yeah, I said, okay, so let's stop chemo. Since then, um, I have my um, still every three months uh, CT scan uh, checkup. Uh, so far, so good. No sign of cancer. I have another one uh, I should have at the end of this month. But uh, honestly, I was scheduled for this Monday. I don't know, but I just want to know, you know, uh, because you live, um, you know, people look at you, look at me and they said, oh, you're fine, blah, blah, blah. Even my family, they don't get it. People don't get it. People, you know, um, they said, well, you should go and live your life. But you can't live your life if you had... If you could die, you know, if you had, it, my death was in, in front of my face. It's changed me. It's changed me a lot. Look, I don't care what other people think. Uh, this is my life. This is my decision. And I think I'm a big winner. I don't listen to anyone, honestly, anyone, even to my family. And I wish more people who are going through cancer will listen to themselves instead of other people, people who have never gone through this. I only listen to people who have experienced what I went through. I know maybe I'm too straightforward, but this is me. And if someone can, you know, uh, learn something from me, that will be great. But look, whatever happens next, I'm, not, I'm, I'm much stronger and I have more knowledge. And uh, because when I got diagnosed for the first time, it was a big surprise. I don't know what it was. But now I know cancer is just another sickness and cancer can be healed. It's about what you eat, it's about your uh, mindset, it's everything. But don't be scared because people want to scare you by saying, you have cancer and then you are just bang, you're done. You're not done. You this is just you know proving how strong you are. And don't listen and don't listen to other people, honestly, like people who have never gone through this because they honestly don't have a clue what they're talking about. <laughs>